Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India NPTEL course Environmental Chemistry and Microbiology. This course will be taught by Professor Shudha Gwell and myself, Professor Anjali Pal. We are both from Civil Engineering Department, IIT Kharagpur. This is module 2 and this is the chemical equilibrium. We have divided this course into two parts. The first part is environmental chemistry which will be covered by me and the second part is the environmental microbiology which will be taught by Professor Shudha Gwell. Now, I, I am coming to my ninth lecture and this is on the chemical equilibrium. The topics covered in this lecture will be dissociation of acids and bases dissociation of water, equilibrium concept in complex formation and dissociation. Ionization of acids and bases we have already seen in the acid base chapter. We all know that according to Arrhenius theory an acid is an is a compound which gives H plus ion in water and a base and a base gives OH minus ion in water. So, Arrhenius theory helps us to explain the strength of acids and bases. Strong acids we know that they fully dissociated 100 percent dissociated in dilute solution and for example, we have seen that HA which is a monoprotic acid or monoprotonic acid which gives H plus ion and A minus ion and in case of acid dissociation we always write K A that is in this case it is H plus ion concentration into A minus ion concentration by the concentration of H A. Now, what we will infer if the K A value is very high or K A value is low. For a strong acids the K value is very large as because this H A concentration is very is almost it is almost undissociated no undissociated acid in case of strong acids that is why K value is, is very very large. And in case of uh, weak acids say for example, acetic acid we all know that acetic acid is a very weak acid in that case we write H A C. Uh, is nothing but it decomposes into H plus ion plus acetate ion and then in that case we can write K A is H plus ion concentration into A C minus ion concentration by H A C and we can see from the value that it is low very low at 25 degree centigrade it is of the order the order of 10 to the power minus 5. So, it is it is a weak acid it dissociate only a very small fraction uh, means degree of dissociation is low not like the strong acid. Now, in case of uh, diprotic acids it is a very important uh, uh, example this is the carbonic acid it is a diprotic acid you, you see here H 2 CO 3 that means 2 protons are there. So, what will happen when first dissociation occurs then H 2 CO 3 will give H plus ion plus bicarbonate ion and here we can write that K A 1 for the second dissociation we can write K A 2. Now, in case of K A 2 for for this carbonic acid we can see the value here it is it is a very weak acid it is very weak acid if we uh, know the P K A value it is the minus log of K then we will see it is just below the below 7 okay. and 
from this pk value we can easily tell that it is a very weak acid. Now, in the second when that second uh, deprotonation occurs from the bicarbonate ion this bicarbonate ion will give H plus ion plus carbonate ion and then in that case K A 2 is can can be written in by this expression and the value of K A 2 is 4.69 into 10 to the minus 11. It is very low and in that case we can write that it is when we determine the P K A then we, it is seen that it is in the alkaline ring. Now, for ammonia which is a typical weak base similarly we can write ammonia plus water gives ammonium ion plus O H minus ion and in, the, in this case we can write K B which is nothing but ammonium ion concentration into O H minus ion concentration by, by ammonia concentration which is also the 1.75 into 10 to the minus 5 and P K B is um, minus log of K B. So, uh, we can easily get from this value. Now, regarding the ionization of water this has been explained uh, in, uh, in the acid base uh, chapter and then here again it is written uh, just to recapitulate that in aqueous solution the most important equilibria is the dissociation of water water into H plus ion and O H minus ion. A proton we all know now that the proton cannot exist because it is has a very small volume. So, the extremely large charge to volume ratio it is having. So, it is um, immediately it reacts with another water molecule another molecule of water to form the hydronium ion or hydroxonium ion. So, basically uh, it is better to write this equation, but for simplicity purpose we always use this <coughs> this uh, this dissociation expression this uh, water dissociation expression. Now, the it gives us the ion product of water we know that from the equilibrium uh, expression we get the equilibrium uh, uh, constant that uh, that is the um, equilibrium constant is expressed in case of water as K w it is nothing but the ion product of water. And the water concentration here from the rules we know that it is taken as 1. Now, K w value also we know at 25 degree is very low value 10 to the minus 14. It is important to remember it is important to remember that the numerical value values of H plus and O H minus will include what it will include in a system when you consider the H plus ion concentration and when you uh, use the O H minus ion concentration what do they include? They include all the H plus ion concentration and all the O H minus ion concentration whether they come from water alone or they come from other constituents that is present in water. This is very very important. I have shown you that the, the seesaw that if H plus ion goes up then O H minus should go out go down. So, but it is here it is written that what is the H plus ion concentration from water it is coming from other species it is coming. So, everything together that is the H plus ion concentration o same is true for O H minus ion concentration we should not forget this one. Okay. Now, complex ion formation and dissociation. It is also very important to know the complex ion if in if uh, some complex ion is formed how we should uh, how we should write and what we should consider. Okay. In complex ions we observe the presence of what is a complex ion. If you consider a complex ion say for example, this one this one A G N H 3 twice plus okay. in this ion what do you see? we see that there is a metal, there is a metal, metal ion and this metal ion is complexed with something is associated with one or more ions it may be ion or it may be molecule. So, here in this case it is molecule, but some cases it may be ion also. Okay. So, metal associated with some ligand they are called ligand and common ligands we know that they may be OH minus this ion carbonate this also ion ammonia fluoride chloride cyanide thiosulfate all these can act as a ligand. Okay. And some species like EDTA 
ethylene diamine tetra acetic acid humic acid is a natural ligand ok. In the humus substances we always see it is a natural color forming agent they they it is a it has a very uh, complex structure and they also can combine with metal ion to form the complex ok. For example, silver plus ion forms a complex with ammonia to give silver ammonia or silver amine complex is having the this structure and it, it, it is in equilibrium. Now, so here the formation uh, here what do we how will you express in case of acid we say it is dissociation constant ok. In case of ammonia also dissociation constant uh, that is base weak base ok. And then in case of uh, say water we write the ion product of water K w in case of um, so in case of this uh, complex how will you say in case of complex we write that it is the formation constant or stability constant ok and usually beta term by using beta term we express. Like um, previously we have seen that solubility product this also an equilibrium uh, constant ok for solid substances which is insoluble um, uh, insoluble compounds we usually uh, this, this term is very very important that is the solubility product. So, here all such complex ions are destroyed by removing one of the dissociation product. Taking this example, say for example, silver amine complex is produced from silver ion and ammonia ok. Then this complex may be broken down. Now, you have the some idea about the shifting the equilibrium right. So, if I want to shift ok, this has been dissolved silver plus and ammonia form the complex it is a dissolved state ok. Now, if I want to uh, make this reaction in the go to backward reaction then how will you do it? How will you do it? Then if we want to do it some product here in that case these are the products, but some product has to be removed how you can how you can remove it you remove it. Say for example, if you, you want to remove the ammonia ammonia that is produced then how will you remove it you put it some acid ok. Then in presence of acid this ammonia will form the ammonium ion which is very stable and then ammonium ion will go into solution then slowly slowly the reaction will go to the backward direction ok. All such complex ions are destroyed by removing one of the dissociation products. This is the dissociation product when this is dissociated it forms this one. So, one of the dissociation products if you can remove it then it will go towards the backward direction. For example, silver ammonia complex ion can be destroyed if some source of H, H plus ion is added because upon addition of H plus ion NH4 plus is produced which is more stable. So, ammonia will be removed and ammonia ammonia will be removed as ammonium ion. So, more and more silver amine complex will be going towards the backward direction to produce more ammonium ion ammonia and then again acid is there. So, it will be removed. So, slowly slowly it will be totally broken down to silver plus and NHG. So, this is the concept actually. Now, formation of complex ion here it is shown a very very com com really complex. What is the complex ion here it is shown? It is shown here as a typical example let us consider the formation of complexes between mercury 2 plus and chloride. Why I am saying it complex? Because in different proportions chloride can add up to mercury 2 plus to form different species ok at different proportions it can add ok. How it can form say A g 2 plus it can um, combine chloride can combine with A g 2 plus to form A g C l plus it can form A g C l 2 it, it can form A g C l 3 minus it can form A g C l 4 2 minus also depending on how much chloride is combined ok. So, here there are many all the um, all the express expressions equilibrium expressions are shown equilibrium reactions are shown. So, H g 2 plus when one only one chloride ion is combined then H g C l plus then then another chloride is combined with this one then H g C l 2 another chloride is combined then this is forming this one then another is combined. So, all four uh, chloride ions are combined. So, it is formed H g C l 4 2 minus ok. Now, separately we can 
they write the equilibrium expressions like for the first reaction we can write K 1 is nothing but H G C L plus concentration by H G 2 plus concentration into a C L minus concentration. Similarly, for all reactions we can write K 1, K 2, K 3, K 4 and these all are obtained these value K, K values are can be obtained from the literature. Okay. Now, it is also possible to consider the overall reaction by combining the step wise reaction. So, in the previous case we have shown single single steps, okay. but we can combine say for example, these two if I combine okay, then what will happen H G 2 plus plus 2 C L minus then it will forming H G C L 2. Okay. If I combine these three then H G C L 2 plus plus 3 chloride minus will give this one. So, by combining also we can write in this fashion okay, H G C L 2 2 plus H G 2 plus plus C L minus giving this one, then H G 2 plus plus 2 C L minus this. So, it is combined. Okay. Now, here it is all are combined in that case these are the equilibrium expressions we can write and we can write beta, beta term. In the previous case we have written K 1, K 2 in this way, here it is beta way because it is the it is the uh, uh, formation constant okay, or stability constant. Okay. And we will see if we just uh, do the homework we will see that beta 2 is nothing but k 1 k 2 beta 3 is nothing but k 1 k 2 k 3 beta 4 is nothing but k 1 k 2 k 3 k 4 like this. And instability constant if you take the reciprocal of beta term then it will be the instability constant. Now, K, it is written as k instability k inst and then this is just the reciprocal. So, in case of beta 4 this is the reciprocal of this one you can see if you take the reciprocal of this one then it will become like this. Using why we are doing this using these expressions and the equilibrium constant values it is possible to determine the concentrations of different species as mentioned above at certain conditions. Say for example, you have a system where mercury 2 plus concentration is known, conditions are known, then uh, chloride concentration is known. Then you, you are able to tell me how much is there as a GCL plus, how much is there as a GCL 2 plus, how much is there a GCL 3 minus like that. All species how much is present? If you know the equilibrium expressions, if you know the k values, then you can easily tell how much amount, how much is the concentration for each species. Okay. So, this is the this, but this is a very complex case, but uh, previous ones like silver amine complex it is a very simple case. Okay. In that case also you can determine that. Now, the references are um, this, these are the references and in the soil McCarty particularly this uh, mercury reference is there, mercury chloride species that formation is there and uh, there is one example also shown as I told uh, in the previous slide using these expressions and equilibrium constant values you can determine the different species there is a very nice example there you can solve it you can solve it by yourself because you know the concept now you can solve it by yourself and uh, and finally, you can uh, see that whether you have uh, you have done it correctly or not. If you can do it correctly without seeing the book, the solved problem, then I will know that okay, you have understand uh, what is explained here. Okay, so please try that. Um, uh, this is a very good example actually um, to learn, and um, I hope that you can solve it without seeing the solved uh, solved problem. Okay, thank you.